Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 71. We are in a very sobering story of drama. We find a person today interacting with Jesus who says, I will never believe in him. I will never believe. And then later, Jesus describes him as being one of disbelief, like not just not believing, but actually sort of like anti-believing. So who is this person and what can we learn from him? And it's Thomas. It's doubting Thomas, Jesus and Thomas. This is from John chapter 21. Now Thomas, one of the 12 called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Period. Eight days later, his disciples, who were inside again, And Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. And put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. So yesterday we were talking about the disciples who had gathered together. Jesus appears through a closed uh, door. He says, Peace be with you. He sends them and then he gets them to, he has them receive the Holy Spirit. An epic event that, that humanity has been waiting for literally since the day that Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden, this separation with God, and finally God is now indwelling. It's this huge, thunderous moment. And then we narrow the focus down to one individual, Thomas. One, he's called one of the twelve. He had been every, he's seen every, he's seen every miracle. And he was not with them. So I was wondering, like, why wasn't he with them? Was he just getting groceries or was it something more nefarious than that, that he wanted nothing to do with these guys? We don't, I don't know. I'm just speculating. So here's Thomas. His level of unbelief is such that he did not believe the women. He did not believe Mary Magdalene and the other group of women. He did not believe Cleopas and the other person on the road to Emmaus. He didn't believe Peter and John and what they experienced at the tomb. Then he doesn't believe. Then, then adding on to this, he doesn't believe the eleven, and possibly even more, who are now confessing to him that they have seen the Lord. And I, I'm assuming many of them had believed along with it. And he gives the statement, the testimony: "I will never believe unless I will never believe." And then he does the whole fingers and hands and stuff. So. This goes on for eight days. The Lord lets him stew for eight days. Let me go back to one thing. So this is back in the middle of John, uh, John chapter 11, where Lazarus was, uh, had died but hadn't been resurrected. They had been warned, hey, don't go back to Bethany and Jerusalem area. Uh, They're trying to kill you there. And then Thomas says, this is one of the only things that Thomas says in the whole New Testament. Thomas says, and then it so this is John eleven sixteen. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go that we may die with him. Let us go that we may die with him. So he confesses way back then that he's kind of like all in with, with Jesus, probably to be this uh, uh, political king kind of a guy that they thought and so here we find this level of disappointment or unbelief for sure. So this is a rescue mission of of Thomas. It's like the mother that says 
which of your children do you love the most? Well, I love the one that's furthest away. And there's no question about it that Thomas, at this moment in time, is the disciple that's furthest away. So he stews on it for eight days. He, then Jesus appears to them again. And he says to him, do not disbelieve, but believe. And then gives him the physical evidence that he was so uh, committed to. What what Thomas says, which is my Lord and my God, is apparently the strongest of ex, strongest expression of deity, uh, like in the New Testament. This is a big thing that he says, my Lord and my God. And uh, he either is confessing uh, God to be God uh, and ascribing identity and office and authority to the Lord, or he's actually using the, the name of the Lord in vain, which is uh, re- ridiculous. So it's an expression of thorough belief in him and in his in his uh, deity. So I am touched by this. I'm touched by the level of unbelief, number one. I'm touched by the personal touch of Jesus, like, hey, we got to get this guy uh, back in the fold. And so I think there's things to be like Thomas. Thomas does yield. Um, so he goes from, I never am going to believe to I'm believing in the most solid way, in the solid, most solid confession we have. So there's things to be like Thomas, and then there's this don't be like Thomas. Um, I like the Lord seeking him out and like, hey, what's it going to take for this guy, this rescue guy, rescue mission from hard-heartedness? So he goes from, he kind of goes all the extremes. He goes from, let's go to Jerusalem and die with him in John chapter 11. Then he goes to here, I will never believe. And then uh, in an act of disbelief, and then he, he goes to yielding. So my question for us as we leave is, who's the Thomas in your life? Is it you? You might be the Thomas. Are you actively like disbelieving? If so, may the Lord give you grace to, to, to turn your heart. Or is it somebody else that you want to hold up today? And Lord, can you work? You can work in those who disbelieve. That's what this 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 proves. So if, if we have someone in our lives who maybe is actively disbelieving, Lord, we work in their hearts and help them to believe that you are Lord and God. Thank you for listening. I'll see you tomorrow.